Okay, inspired by my blog about cassettes, I've come into my basement. Here's my basement. Pulled out the cassettes box, and I'm looking at my cassettes, seeing how many I actually have. Here's my last car mixtape, The Heart's Filthy Lesson. As you can see, it was recorded almost 20 years ago, 2-16-04, February 16th. 2004. It's mixtape number 87. Car tape number 87. Why do I include this? I don't know. And it's in the great 3M box I used to have. Remember those? I forgot to include <coughs> one of my... <coughs> Jeez. I forgot to include one of my favorite tapes. The Domestic Hour recorded by Mike McDaniel in August 1980 but the best thing about it was you had this copper tape that you put on the outside of the packaging and then you put these book of mormon glyphs on it including AOP sign a swastika and a maltese cross <laughs> genius absolutely genius and then there's this one, the 1976 David Bowie concert, which I recorded on a, a highly desirable Nakamishi tape, EX, pure ferrocrystal. Nakamishi was the bomb back then, as I recall, in 1976. But this one's Bowie Live from the Nassau Auditorium, and I recorded it live off the radio April 24th, 1976. Very good recording. My very first... Mixtape, car tape, was this Blue Oyster Cult tape, which I recorded in August 1976. There's the BOC glyph. Uh, let's see, I think I recorded this shortly after, yes, after the, um, not Fire of Unknown Origin, uh, Agents of Fortune album came out. And as you can see, there's a one there indicating that it is indeed mixtape number one. Look at that, a Maxell UDXL C90. That was the tape in 1976. Not all of my cassettes were recorded on good uh, media. This one is a really crappy Ampex cassette. Warning sign. Let's see, I did that one in January 1979. It has a lot of Talking Heads music on it. This is my seventh cassette. So oftentimes, I just recorded mixtapes on what I had. This is a TDK chrome tape. It's a C60 chrome tape. This one I recorded in May 1979. Uh, let's see, some ABBA, um, Paul McCartney, Todd Rundgren, that kind of thing. So I remember chrome tapes were pretty good. They had a special knockout that the cassettes of the era could detect that it was a chrome tape and bias it properly. Well, here's one, The Wall, that I recorded in December, January, February, 79 to 80. I was just starting college. It's a chromium dioxide and in Dolby, Pink Floyd, The Wall. However, my son got interested in Pink Floyd. That's his text over there. And he decided to brandish this cassette with, uh, Go home, beat the kids. Go home, beat the kids. 311. I'm not sure why 311. But anyway, that was my son Ethan's doing. I should mention these uh, C boxes. They were pretty clever. They were made by 3M. You could, uh, let's see, here we go. There's the logo. I think you could see it. C box. Probably a patent number on there. Is a patent pending? Nope, patent number. But anyway, you could uh, link them all together. They slid together like that, and you could have a whole bunch of them, which I used to do. One of my favorite things was doing stuff like that. Now, 30, 40 years on, they're all kind of sticky, so they don't necessarily open. Well, here's one I made in college when I was using these transfer letters. Sis Crusher. That's a Neil Young tape. And then Maxell UDXL2. As I recall, that was one of the better tapes that I used. Let's see, is this uh, high-level bias? 
Yeah, 1985. I started using better tapes once I got out of college and I got a job. She blinded me with science. That, of course, is that Thomas Dolby recording. And the very next one, as I said, I started buying better tapes. Denon made uh, pretty good cassette tapes, too. 1985. And I... Um, Use Dolby Noise Reduction I B because I like the brighter quality of it. I always played these back with the Dolby off, but yeah, these were Dolby recorded. Then there was a Vogue in the 80s for cassettes that you could see through. That was a marketing thing. Here's a Sony UCX90 that you could see through. Here to go. I think that was a Devo. Yeah, there's a lot of Debo in there. June 1985, I was doing a lot of reenacting, and I used to listen to this in the car on the way to Civil War events. Here's another good one. Little Miss Dangerous by Ted Nugent. I remember listening to this in the car, a TDKSA. When did I record this? July, November 86, Dolby B. Um, I credit Ted Nugent's Little Miss Dangerous for partly for my hearing, my present hearing loss. I used to listen to that song full volume. I deafened myself in a car with it. So thanks, Ted. Well, here's a rarity. A for Ventist, which is my, let's see, 71st mixtape. This one is unique because it's, in fact, a metal tape, the TDK MA60. This had type four metal position. And as you could see, it had knockouts in the middle to tell cassette decks that it was a metal tape. And by the way, the title refers to a song by Enya, along with Caribbean Blue and uh, a bunch of other stuff I was listening to at the time. Chattahoochee. There was an unfortunate period in the 90s when I was listening to country western country music, and I think a friend of ours used to line dance to that. I don't remember, and she was trying to get us involved. We didn't do it. I rarely listened to that. And then Radar Love, a great song in 1973. It's still a great song. This is a 1994 cassette, so that shows how long I've been doing these. Energy efficient and anti-resonant cassette mechanism. So Maxell was serious. They weren't using transparent cassettes or anything like that. And I stopped using Dolby. Don't know why. When I was doing Civil War reenacting, I used to listen to Civil War music. And this was one of the cassettes. Civil War, well, it's a Deming cassette. Songs of the Civil War, the Smith Brothers, and various others. My poor wife got so tired of hearing Dixie and Bonnie Blue Flag and all that. Uh, 1994. Civil War Hip Parade, which was made for me by a guy named Hubie back in 1986. A bunch of weird, off-the-wall Civil War stuff that I very carefully notated here. And then I had a Militaria. This is full of military music. Now, every now and then these things jam. Oh, here's Max L in there. In their see-through period, 1990. Yeah, it's just military music through the ages. I've got the Agincourt song on there. 15th century, Henry V. All right, back in the mid-90s, the Beatles did their anthology project, and so I recorded Free as a Bird, a song I liked a lot. What kind of cassette is this? This is a metal cassette, metal tape, recorded in 1996. And a, um, yeah, what I started doing was I began to run out of these little, these labels things, so I cut them out of the backs of the cassettes and made them myself. So there's what's on that. Yeah, a word about these these C boxes. I remember Porsche. Maybe the dealership did this. Maybe Porsche did. I don't remember. But I remember sitting in a brand new uh, 911. I think it was a 78 
Yeah, it must have been a 78 911. And these things came with the 911. There were maybe about seven of them stacked together in a center console in a Porsche. So, yeah, see boxes. Another feature about cassettes is sometimes the label falls off. <laughs> and that's what happened here. Then it gets jammed in the mechanism. And by the way, yes, this, this Dymo label maker, quarter inch, that's what I use to label all of these. And, uh, well, I got that as a Christmas present in 1968 when I was 12 years old. Love Stinks, that's a song by Kyle's band, I forget. Oh, here's a crappy cassette. Let's see, 1980, yeah, I was in college. I was using inferior cassettes. Maxell LNs were about the worst you could get. Strange Brew, a combination of the mundane and of the mystic. Hmm. Now, here's an interesting tape, the Sabbath tape. As you can see, it's in this godly white cassette. Now, why has it been discolored? I don't know. It looks like the sun got to it somehow. It must have been, I must have had it in the car and it was sticking out. It was a sideways feed and I left it in and the sun discolored it. Interesting, huh? But anyway, Sabbath tape is a uh, collection of Mormon tabernacle choir and all sorts of uh, other stuff that I found that was suitable for Sabbath listening, 1980. By the way, I listened to it again after, I don't know, 20 years and it was like, Talking to an old friend. Ah, yes. The Memorex. The MRX-3 Oxide. They originally started with MRX-2 Oxide, and they had these really neat cases, black shrink wrap. Uh, this was must have been a later one, MRX-3 Oxide. And then when I started playing rugby, I got interested in New Zealand All Blacks. This one's entitled Haka, and yes, it has a Haka on it. But it's a, a Fuji cassette, and Fuji was into that uh, clear case fad that went on in the, well, 90s. A DRX2 cassette. Used to listen to that one on my way to rugby games. Here's one I made in the 1990s, tough enough. It's a TDK metal tape. As you can see from the knockouts. It also has that see-through kind of thing. Good tape, as I recall. Tough enough, let's see. That's a song by some band whose name I forget. And then I'm Afraid. It's actually I'm Afraid of Americans, but I couldn't get it all on the label, so I just made it, I'm afraid. And Maxell had this guy sitting in a chair getting blown by the utter, well, overwhelming sound of the Maxell cassette. Remember that logo? I think they still use it. I'm Afraid of Americans by David Bowie. Huh, 2000. Good song. So, my poor dad, he would be listening to my music and he always would say, play something I like. So, I made the Play Something I Like album, which is all, what you would call elevator music. And I'd put it on for him to listen to in Dolby Eye stereo. We had speakers outside in the backyard, and I would put this in the cassette deck in the den, and then I'd route it out to the speaker so he could listen to it while he was sitting in a float in the pool in the backyard. Steps in the Snow and What the West Wind Saw, that's... Uh, two more Sabbath tapes, Gentle Music for the Sabbath Day, recorded in 1981. Uh, both of them take their name from WC Preludes. And here's a historical one, the Christmas tape. And this one is unique. It's a Memorex 120 MRX 3 Oxide, the Christmas and Wedding Reception cassette. Yes, I actually played this at our wedding reception. And um, I made it in August 1980 for a wedding that took place in December 1980. And unlike the other cassettes, this one has a long form list of all the music that we played during our December wedding reception. 
recorded during August and September 1980. Now, the problem with this tape is that it's a 120. It's a two-hour cassette. It drags horribly. I tried to digitize it, and I found that I just couldn't. This tape's in really bad shape. So, I keep it as a historic memento. Not to be played. Try and play it. It'll probably end up mostly in the tape mechanism, tape player mechanism, and tear. Here's a cassette with an interesting history. Running Up That Hill, named after a song by Kate Bush. I recorded this in 1987. I used to listen to it when I went to Civil War reenactments. And this song had a resurgence in popularity because it was used in an episode of Stranger Things. All of a sudden, it became this big hit, and I remember hearing it. I'd start hearing it again after remembering it from, oh, I don't know, 30 years prior. Comfortably Numb, named after the Pink Floyd song of the same name, another 1987 tape. But that's the story of running up that hill. Highfield, a tape named after a guy named Highfield. I borrowed a bunch of his CDs, 1990. That's why it's named that. Sometimes my mixtapes titles got kind of zen. This is 59, number 59, because it is indeed my 59th car tape made in September 1990. Maxell, MXO, oh, it's another metal tape. Probably sounds great. And finally, <clears throat> the Kramer tape, named after a guy named Steve Kramer that I used to work for in my first job off of, out of college. A Maxell UDXL2 tape recorded in Dolby C, which was rare for me. I didn't do that very often because it that usually meant that I was going to play it at home rather than a car. The Kramer tape, a bunch of uh, big band music, actually. Steve had a great collection. He had record uh, shelves all to a room. He had a wonderful vinyl collection. I wonder if he still has it. Hey, Steve. I bet he's retired. So anyway, that's the end of my uh, mixtape video. I hope you enjoyed this walk through, oh, how many years has it been? 1976 through 2004 when I made these tapes. Yeah, cassettes are back in again. I don't understand that, but whatever.